We want to take a broader look at the Orban effect, if we can call it that, what the influences and ramifications of his so-called illiberal state might be. Judy Dempsey is a fellow at Carnegie Europe and editor-in-chief of the Strategic Europe blog. She spoke to us from Berlin. Tell me first how you would describe Orban and his politics. His politics is about increasing his power base, staying in power, and preparing for the next elections. That doesn't quite describe what he stands for, however. He stands for a particular view of politics, which, is, um, which wants to reduce the interference of the European Union. He stands for a kind of politics that is kind of nationalist-based, and populist based but essentially this is about the urbanization of the hungarian political system is he an outlier in europe i mean you talk about nationalism you talk about populism but he's become a flashpoint is he extraordinary he's extraordinary because actually he's a very very good orator firstly secondly he has a great knack of getting on with the other eu leaders and um, the political grouping that Orban belongs inside the European Union is called the, the European People's Party, the Conservative Grouping. He has just wooed them over and they will not take a stand against him uh, for many reasons, um, because of his ability to persuade, but also actually some of them support him, especially over the migration and refugee issue. So there were ideas and calls for the EPP to... Uh, expel Fidesz, that's the governing party in Hungary, out of the EPP. And they won't because they hide behind Hungary because Orban is beginning to set the agenda when it comes to the refugee and migration issue in Europe. Whether other more liberal-minded European politicians like this or not, that's the reality. So why do you think the whole issue around the Central European U University has become such a flashpoint if the key issue is, as it is in much of Europe, migration and, and immigration? Um, let me take the second issue first. The, for the moment, the migration refugee issue is, is not on the number one agenda. Um, so it, um, all the European Union governments have, have a bit of a breathing space because of the deal they did with Turkey over um, giving, um, over dealing with the refugees and stopping uh, closing the borders, more or less. Uh, Orban is on to something else. For him, the Central European University represents foreign interference and particularly interference from the bete noir in Orban's eyes, George Soros, um, president of the Open Society um, Institute. And uh, it's it's very curious. He's, he's honed in on Soros over the past several months, if not past couple of years, because he sees this as, as somebody, a liberal, who wants to promote a kind of, he wants to just widen civil society in Hungary, and he wants to ensure that the Hungarian transformation and transition does not slide back. And Orban doesn't like him for that because he represents the competition of ideas. At the same time, does the European Union then represent foreign interference in his view as well? Hmm. Well, I, last time I looked, uh, Hungary was a member of the European Union, and uh, I should remind your your listeners and readers and viewers that hung, uh, three percent of Hungary's gross domestic product, three percent, is actually funded by what's called the European Structural and Development Fund. These things for the environment, for roads, for bridges, for schools, for hospitals, for modernizing infrastructure. So um, the European Union means an awful lot for Hungary, so Orban wouldn't leave the, walk out of the EU at the moment. No, he wants to set the agenda, but um, the European Union, by and large, has not taken on Hungary. It has taken on Poland a little, but once you're in, it's very hard to uh, rein in what I would call sort of quasi-renegade uh, member states, which is a great pity. Uh, put Russia and Putin into this picture for me now and what kind of influence he might have in Hungary at this point. I think Orban is acutely aware of, of Putin's influence. And um, in terms of energy, that's clear, uh, what they're doing in building uh, nuclear power stations. Putin's very close relationship with uh, oligarchs in Hungary. Oligarchs are coming up strong and fast in Hungary at the moment. And uh, Putin uses Orban a little in terms of making the EU uncertain or a bit fragile over the sanctions. But 
Orban has never stopped uh, the rolling over of sanctions against Russia. But the, the influence of, of the influence is there in terms of the media, in terms of economic influences, in terms of the oligarchs. It, just as it is in the Czech Republic and in Slovakia and indeed in Poland, Russian influence now is is creeping through Eastern Europe and indeed, as you know, parts of Western Europe. Um, you mentioned this, and I know Orban said, too, you know, we are part of the European Union. But at the same time, I know that he believes that, and, and you've suggested this in some of your writing as well, that, you know, that, that sort of post-1945 liberal agenda has, I guess, in his view, been exhausted. I, I know one of the headlines, and I know you don't write the headlines, on one of your pieces said that Hungary and Poland have made a mockery of Europe. Um, Actually, what are you driving yes. at? Yes, it is a mockery. Um, we look. Uh, anybody who, any country who joins the EU, signs up to the EU's values and interests, particularly the values of human rights, democracy, freedom of the press, education, freedom of movement, decency and tolerance. I mean, these are basic European values, and they are basic universal values. And Hungary is challenging this because, because. Uh, under Orban, and you have this situation in Poland as well, they don't, um, these leaders do not want their sovereignty to be, to be further weakened and delegated to Brussels. This is the first point. Secondly, um, there's a sense among the, several countries now in, East, that in Europe, not just in Eastern Europe, that the so-called liberal agenda has gone too far, that in terms of values, gender equality, gay rights and so on, I don't think that's the issue. I think the issue is the competition of power, elites, transparency. And if you see what's happening in Hungary now and in Poland, transparency is being reduced. The role of the press, media freedom is being reduced because it means challenging the governing parties. Remember, uh, Fidesz is, is in a very strong position as has changed the constitution. And once you get power, you like to hold on to it. I'm, it seems as basic as that. But the EU, unfortunately, is not standing up strong enough for its values. Mm. Ms. Dempsey, thank you so much for your insight into this. Pleasure.